With the Blue Lagoon extending their closure and the town of Grindavik formally going to be asking the government to build fortifications around their town, I'm going to be looking at the possible eruption that's coming up in the next few weeks as well as any of the news that's surrounding this event. Now, as we know, the Blue Lagoon has been closed due to all of the seismic activity as well as due to the eruption that happened earlier in December. And we have a bunch of risk assessment maps that have come out from the meteorological office and the Blue Lagoon has closed. Now, they said that they're going to be closed until December 29th, and then the status is going to be reassessed following the new risk assessment that should be coming out uh, that day. Stated in an announcement, as you can see on their website, um, that due to the volcanic eruption, all establishments of the Blue Lagoon have been temporarily closed. It says the representatives of the Blue Lagoon are now waiting for the risk assessment, and therefore they decided to extend the closure until December 29th which makes sense because all the roads to the Blue Lagoon are closed and the only way that people could get there for the few days that they were open was by a bus through a tour guide of, of some kind. Now, of course, the announcement states that all guests with the reservations will be contacted within the next coming days and uh, everyone's going to be, you know, moving around on the scheduling and, and things like that. Situation is, of course, going to be closely monitored in close consultation with the authorities is what... Uh, of course, they say as well. Now, the Blue Lagoon was temporarily closed last November on the 9th due to the earthquakes and then partially reopened on a Saturday or Sunday, December 17th, but then, of course, closed again on the uh, 18th, which is the very next day as the eruption began. And so they're, uh, they're doing that. Now, the Blue Lagoon, though, has ordered these loud warning sort of sirens which the intention is to install so that the sound signal from these these sirens immediately reaches all staff as well as visitors in all outdoor and indoor areas of the lagoon now this is all confirmed to mbf which is the news agency by helga artnadotir who is the manager of sales operations and services of the blue lagoon and she was saying that they go to the to the blue lagoon to ensure an even more resp like effective response to the visitors uh, and the employees and they're hoping that these new sirens are going to have the ability to reach everyone faster and better uh, and make sure that everyone's safe in, in case of um, immediate danger or an eruption or, or earthquakes or something uh, that uh, this area is known for over over the recent years now but until these sirens come in uh, the Blue Lagoon is going to be using its emergency plans and the current warning system, which is, of course, in full effect. And that would be, of course, when it reopens or if it reopens uh, on the 29th, which is tomorrow. Now, of course, uh, the advantage of, of the new sirens that are coming in is that it covers all outdoor and indoor areas at the same time, is what she said. So look forward to that. So if you go to the Blue Lagoon, they're going to have uh, brand new air raid sirens that, uh, that will be going on. If we take a look... At seismic activity in the last few days or basically since December 22nd we've had 140 earthquakes recorded in the western part of Fagersfeld five of which were larger than magnitude of one now this isn't necessarily breaking news but it's just a little bit more than we've seen recently unusually they were at a depth of about seven kilometers which is deeper than the earthquakes uh, that are seen above the magma tunnel at Grindavik uh, and this is all stated from an announcement from the Icelandic Meteorological Office. And we can see here some of the seismic activity over the past 48 hours. Now, since December 22nd, we've had 730 earthquakes uh, that have been recorded around this magma tunnel that runs through Grindavik and out into the sea. And of these, 40 of them were larger than a magnitude of 1, the largest measuring 2.1. Um, the average depth of these earthquakes is about 4 kilometers and Armin Hörnsson, a professor of volcanology at the University of Iceland, says that little can be read from all this seismic activity west of Fagrosfeld. He says it's just a release of tension all over the Reykjanes Peninsula. You know, the panic obviously is naturally there. We just had an eruption. It's difficult to say anything about it, though, he said. Um, land has, though, continued to rise in Svartsengi, and the magma is accumulating underneath and when Arman was asked about all this, he says that the system most likely has reached, you know, this point that's very similar to what happened uh, prior to the eruption. Now we're just waiting uh, for something to happen and, and maybe the land rise is going to go a little bit higher. Uh, but as soon as it's kind of the same position that it was, which as my video I had yesterday says that, you know, we're 
days away from that, he says it's expected that uh, there will be an eruption is basically what we're looking at. Looking at the chart here at the bottom, though, it's uh, unusually quiet Wednesday and Thursday so far. And the last time I saw this sort of <laughs> lull in, in seismic activity was right before the eruption occurred uh, previously. So something to definitely keep an eye on over the next couple of hours to days. Now, at a meeting of Grindavik Town Council, which was held in the Reykjavik City Hall, of course, because their town is, is although people can go there, they're, they're using the Reykjavik City Hall to, to do their meetings. It was all agreed to call on the Icelandic government to complete the design and the financing of defenses north of Grindavik. And this proposal was approved by the Town Council, and it is quoted as saying, the Grindavik Town Council calls on the government to complete the design and funding of defenses north of the Grindavik town. In light of recent events, it is important that the project begins as soon as possible to ensure the safety of Grindavik for the future. You can see here is a, a photo from MBF of the fortifications that have happened around the power plant and around the Blue Lagoon. We also have, there's a lot of Facebook groups posting this, uh, a really a better view of what this fortification looks like in real life. Uh, as you can see that it's quite a bit higher than it might look from a lot of these aerial photographs. We can see cars going through here. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's needless to say, uh, I haven't seen this in person myself just because of all the restrictions of the area. This definitely looks like something that could, uh, at least for the, for the short term, stop a bit of uh, lava flow from going one direction uh, or another. I know that there's uh, various methods that they're trying to use to, to make this happen, but definitely this looks like something that's going to work. So hopefully the town of Grindavik, I mean, it makes sense that they're asking for this. Uh, it is a very tricky situation however because if this is an event or a series of events that's going to go on for hundreds of years uh the question is a lot of people are asking uh, especially in the comments of the videos is should the town of grindavik just be moved at this point and and not spend all this money for something that could inevitably be the destruction of the town um personally i don't really have a, a strong viewpoint one way or the other i mean there's arguments for both of them you know you don't want to have to spend all this money to to protect a town that maybe in three months will be destroyed by earthquakes or a volcano uh, but of course it's also a town full of people and they've lived their lives there and they've lived you know generations sometimes coming from this so it's definitely something that should should be closely considered and uh, if we're building fortifications around the blue lagoon then i'd say that there's probably good cause to build at least something north of Grindavik to help them out uh, for the short term. But uh, that's all the news for today. I hope you enjoyed. I'm always going to be keeping it updated with whatever breaking news comes out. We're going to be getting a new risk assessment map tomorrow, I believe. I mean, hopefully it's tomorrow, but maybe it's going to come in today. And then we'll know more about uh, the Blue Lagoon, what type of situation we're in. I'm expecting, due to all of the uh, recent events, land rise all of this that the risk assessment will uh, stand strong and that will still be uh, a danger zone in a lot of these areas that are sort of already there but until that comes out and until more news comes in thank you so much for watching